Welcome back to the lab, y'all. It is your old Professor Pilk. And if you guys remember last week, we talked about a way you can farm shiny Mew from uh, Pokemon Red uh, or Blue or even Yellow. Now, at the time, just literally during editing, this image had come to my, uh, just come into my, I guess, field of view, so to speak. And I didn't really fully understand it. And so what I want to do is I want to break this down because... While, yes, Shiny Mew was a huge, huge, huge accomplishment in uh, Pokemon Red, and if you have a 3DS, you can transfer it to uh, Scarlet and Violet. I actually did all that in the previous video. Make sure you check that out. But since then, I've actually been able to farm up several other Pokemon, including all the Shiny Birds, including all of the starters. You don't even have to do the starter trick. You can literally get all the starters here. You can even get them fully evolved here if that's all you care to have. So, we talked a little bit about this, but I didn't really even at the time fully understand what this was. So let's kind of dive into this, and then we'll dive into yet another way that you can actually accomplish any single solitary unit in the entire game quickly, easily, and with minimal effort. But first, let's talk about this, because this is probably one of the most interesting methodologies. So, let me start up here at the top, and I'll kind of zoom in a bit up here. You remember, when you do your Mew, uh, your, the, the Mew glitch, so to speak, we'll just kind of scoot over here. You go up the Nugget Bridge, you come over, and you talk to this the, this trainer here. My hand gets cut off with the trainer over, here, over there in the grass. You go down one. And before he triggers, you hit X and then fly away or teleport away or whatever. Now, we always kind of generally come over here and we talk to this trainer. Well, my hands once again cut off, but we talk to the, the trainer right here that triggers this Mew. That's this guy right here that the line is pointing to right up there. So when you talk to that trainer, he's got one Mon and that Mon will always guarantee uh will uh, spawn Mew when you go back through the Nugget Bridge. Okay, cool. But one thing I happen to realize is I was like, if that trainer does, what other trainers trigger other things up here? And I actually came through and I was able to get a Gengar. Well, actually from this trainer, believe it or not. Uh, and a Scyther. And a Rhyhorn and a bunch of other weird things. And it really got me more curious about how the Mew glitch worked. And so at the time of making the video, I wasn't really 100% certain how all this had happened. Now I know, and I'm going to share that with you today. But first, let's kind of absorb this for a minute. So actually, if you go over here and you notice, you can actually get Lapras here from this uh, trainer and the trainer way over there. Uh, there's even this trainer right here, which will trigger, uh, let's see, my hand's getting cough. There's a, tr a trainer right over here that will trigger Lapras or even Kadabra. Um, there's Onyx, Pinsir, uh, Growlithe. Literally any Pokemon you're looking for will most likely be triggered somewhere on this map by a bunch of different trainers. So if you're basically going through this map, and once again, I'll put this map in the description down below like I did last time. The easiest way to understand this is that each one of these Pokemon, I'll use this one right here because this is kind of the most diverse one. It's got Mew here in the front, and it's got Star Mew here on the end. Obviously, if you're going to choose, you're going to try to trigger this Mew, right? So, this trainer here in what is Route 8, there's the four trainers that are kind of in a line right up here at the top. So, let me just kind of realign this. Uh, so to speak. Let's see if we can get this right over here. There we go. All right. So the trainer right here on the bottom, though, the fourth trainer down, she will actually trigger either Mew, uh, Star you or any number of these other uh, Pokemon in the center. Obviously, Shelter or um, Good Grief. He's he's a sked. Miroax, unfortunate child. So. Uh, in essence, if you're trying to trigger this, what I would obviously want to do here is most, mo more often than not, is go for Mew. But this is going to represent every Pokemon she's got in her repertoire. So her first Pokemon will spawn Mew. Her second one will spawn uh, his name is on the tip of Cubone. Thank you, Brain. 
uh, then Shelter for the last two, for the for the middle two, and then uh, Star You for the final Pokemon. Now, what you can do is you can actually go in and only fight the first Mon, and then fail it out. The raid, whatever, or say the raid, but the the glitch, what was only really triggered by the the last Mon that you encounter. So. Once again, if we go back up to the top, you walk up to the top of the Nugget Bridge, you go trigger the other trainer, but then fly away, fly down here to Route 8, encounter this trainer, and set like a Mon that you know will lose. That's it. Put like a level 5 Mon there or something. That Mon gets taken out, fail out of the fight. Oh no, I lost my Mon, I'm going to run away, I'm going to cry whatever so long as her first pokemon is the last pokemon that you've encountered fly back to the nugget bridge as you walk back up at the nugget bridge you're going to come up with a dialogue box like we've seen before rather than selecting anything else x out and you will now get a mew encounter but if you beat her or encounter her second pokemon then you're going to get cubone third and fourth will trigger Shelter, and fifth and final will trigger Star You. So you can actually go through here, and believe it or not, this trainer right here will trigger Missing No, though that will do weird stuff to your game. I would highly recommend not attempting that. But obviously, let me go up here. I've got a Lapras or even a Ghastly. I've got Growlithe. I've got every Pokemon under the sun that you can possibly imagine. So when we talked about this before, we went over here. Let's go back down to Fuchsia City. And there's a trainer right outside of Fuchsia City. In fact, right, let's get him a little closer on screen here. This trainer right here. Notice first Pokemon is Staryu, but the second Pokemon will actually trigger Arbok. We actually did that last time because if you're on Pokemon Blue or Pokemon Yellow, you can't natively get an Arbok or at least an Ekans. So you could actually use this trainer to trigger that up. That's essentially what that is. This guy will trigger Ghastly. You've got some Psyducks and some Electabuzzes and things like that down here. Every single NPC in the game will trigger some kind of Pokemon. And then you can just come over here. There's even a dude over here, if you notice, who's every single Pokemon will trigger a, a Growlithe. Now, why is that the case? Simply put, what the game is going to do is the game is going to take the special attack stat of whatever Pokemon you're facing, and when you go back to the Nugget Bridge or any of those other new triggerable, triggerable locations, Nugget Bridge is the one that I'm most familiar with, whenever you go back to those, those locations, it's going to go through the list of Pokemon and it is going to trigger a Pokemon based on that Pokemon's index number. And it's going to take the special attack stat of the last Pokemon that you faced, and that will be the index number it chooses. In other words, the index number for Mew is 21. It actually isn't 151 like you would normally think. If we go all the way, all the way over here, and I apologize, I'm mostly in the way, um, these are all the index numbers for all the Pokemon. So you can actually look these up. See, there's a bunch here that are literally going to trigger missing them because there's a bunch of different um, Pokemon beyond the 151 that are in here. In fact, there's a couple, as you'll notice here, if you get into the 200s, you actually can, uh, believe it or not, face a trainer. You can capture a trainer. I promise you it's going to break your game, but if you really want to be silly you can do it. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's possible. So, in essence, if we go down here, let's go all the way up here, actually. Notice that 21 is the index number for Mew. So what I was doing, and this is the fun part, this is commonly known as the Ditto Glitch. What I would do is I would go up to the Nugget Bridge, talk to the trainer, and I would then fly back down to Fuchsia City. Okay? Let's go back down to Fuchsia City for a minute. And there we go. And once I'm in Fuchsia City, 
I would then go talk to an NPC. Now, it's very important. You have to talk to an NPC for this to work. So any NPC, or I'm sorry, any battleable trainer, not any NPC, but any battleable trainer in the game will cause this to trigger. So I go over here, talk to one of these trainers. It is what it is. Then, and I'll put a little uh, video down here at the bottom showing you how I did this. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then go into the grass. And in the grass, I'm going to look for a ditto. Once I get ditto, I had a star you, ironically enough for what we were talking about before, that had 21 uh, special attack power. I make sure that I swap that star you in immediately. Ditto replicates the star you. As soon as that happens, run, fly back to the Nugget Bridge or any of the other you trigger triggerable locations. Once you do that, you go up to the top, and then it triggers Mew again. I was actually able to farm an entire box of Mews with this method. Not only was I able to, to trigger Mew, if we go over here, back over here to the index file, um, let's see if I can go up here a little bit. I believe it's in the 80s. Is it in the 80s? I thought it was in the 80s. Um, maybe not in the 80s, maybe a little further down. Nevertheless, um, I don't remember what the number is now. Good grief. Doesn't really matter. I was actually able to say, okay, here we go. So Charmeleon is 178, War Turtles 179. So I was actually able to go in here and farm up all of the starters that I was missing, including, including their fully evolved forms. So I have all three versions of all three starters. Then I apply the 8F shiny trick just like we did with Mew. Now, you can go back and watch the video on that. The simple fact of the matter is you still have to have the 8F item. It's, it's, a, it's a tough one to, to farm up, but just like we did before with Mew, take the, the step two of Mew, have all the Pokemon and have all the items lined up, then run 8F. Drop one eight uh, to toss one X accuracy, then go back in, run eight F again. I now have for whatever mon is in that in that box that I'm on. Uh, make sure it's the solo mon, or your game will glitch. I've tested this multiple times. The mon has to be alone in a box. The box number doesn't seem to matter, but so long as the mon is alone in the box, it will turn that Pokemon shiny. I have all the shiny starters. I have the shiny legendary birds. I've obviously got those shiny Mews. I'm working on Mewtwo right now. You can get any Pokemon in Gen 1 shiny. Now, while this sounds really cool and this is really interesting, I want you to bear something in mind here. This means that if you, with a little time and a little bit of effort, put in here, literally what I've done is I've made my... Uh, my 3ds a shiny machine i can farm up any shiny i want at any given point in time that means that those pokemon that get his forms a low in forms any of those other forms i can take the base level mon throw it into one of the other games level them up i think growlith might be one of the rare exceptions i think it still has to be the his and growlith but so long as the base form will evolve into whatever the regional form is, you know, like, like Growlithe, and I think you are the exceptions there, most other Pokemon will actually evolve into whatever the regional form is once they're in that region. That means I could take an, exec, uh, an, an Execute, put it into, I think it's Sun and Moon, which actually I do have now, and I can have myself a shiny a lone executor with with that very rare mark and probably even in a uh, I think you can get them actually in this in the uh, Safari zone if I recollect so that means I could actually even make them shiny bring them out put them into uh, Sun and Moon and I think it's Sun and Moon and then uh, get the alone form with the gen 1 mark gen 1 gen 2 mark shiny 
maybe even in Safari Ball or something really weird like that. There are infinite possibilities here, guys. There, if you, with a little time and a little effort, you could have a really crazy box. So that's what I'm currently working on. That's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have some, I'm, I'm going to bring you guys some videos on my shiny legendary birds, on my, my other shinies that I'm farming up from this game. It is going to be a ton of fun. And believe it or not, a lot of these guys actually will import into uh, Scarlet and Violet, into Sword and Shield, so into those other games that we're playing. And we can have a lot of fun with them there. So if you want to follow along with this, make sure you guys subscribe. I'll be back with more coming up for you guys here really soon.